Hello everyone, Evis T here, and welcome back. This week I thought we'd do something a little bit different, mainly because this is the weekend of my move up to Liverpool, so uh, I'm a little bit short on time. Uh, I had hoped to get a buffer up, and I had done, but unfortunately I had to use it doing other packing and making other preparations. So this week's video is going to be a short one. Uh, it's not so much a tutorial as just a little look at one of my other playthroughs. In this playthrough I've been playing as the Byzantine Empire, um, I, my start date was the Old God's start date, which I think is 864, if memory serves, around about that time anyway. And my goal with this playthrough is initially to repair the Great Schism, or mend it as the event says, and then go on to restore the Roman Empire. And from the Roman Empire, the world! Mwahahaha. <laughs> Anyway, um, I've been doing quite well. As you can see, I've managed to claim Sicily. I've got uh, territories moving up through this way here, though I think those are actually part of the empire at the start anyway. Most of my progress has actually been made over here in the east, because I've been using holy wars against the uh, Muslim population in the area there. These guys, the um, Abbasid, 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 I think, uh, have been making big problems for me, because obviously they're quite a large, powerful empire, and um, basically wars with them, especially holy wars, can be quite awkward because these smaller areas pop in as well. But um, part of my success so far has been uh, a very is being very conscious of the religion mechanic. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go into the religions tab, you'll see the moral authority of the Orthodox faith is at 96.5, which is very high. It actually maxes out at 100, and I actually had, well, I think it actually maxes out at 99.9, .9, but I basically had it maxed out for quite a while. And that effect, if we check the religion overview, means that the Orthodox faith is actually spreading quite far beyond my own borders. So if we alternate between these two, you can see that all of Bulgaria and um, a good part of the territories surrounding it are uh, of the Orthodox faith as well. Tengri is taking quite a good hold here, but it's starting, to it's starting to disintegrate. And it's even creeping up in territories over here as well. So that's actually making the game a lot easier, as it means that I'm not having to deal with different religion penalties when I've conquered these lands. And it's also, of course, helping to destabilize the Muslim religions, in this case the Sunnis, um, because I've been declaring a lot of holy wars against Sunni rulers and they've been repeatedly losing them, it means that the, their religion's moral authority is going down. And if I can get it down quite low, then their religion will of course be a lot easier to convert, which means that my attacks are easier because once I seize these territories, they'll obviously be converted a lot more easily. And it also means that it'll be a lot harder for them to maintain cohesion. Heresies are going to start um, cropping up, or whatever the uh, the Muslim equivalent of those is. Their church is going to lose some of its powers, and basically it means that by waging war on their religion as well as their lands, it's going to be a lot easier for me to seize this area. Now, with the uh, idea of mending the Great Schism, one of the, well, the main prerequisite is to seize the five holy sites. I already have Constantinople, I start with it. Uh, Antioch is over here somewhere, yep, here it is. And I claimed that quite a while back and installed a member of my bloodline on the throne there. And what else do we have? Jerusalem, I just seized. So this guy should be reigning in Jerusalem. So go to location there, yep. This is one I uh, seized just before I saved this game. So that's going quite nicely. Next up is Alexandria, which is over here. Now, unfortunately, they're part of the um, Tulanid here. They're nowhere near as much of a threat as the Abbasid, but the problem is if I declare war on the um, Tulianid, Tulanid, yeah, I always write the first time Tulanid. Sorry, it's quite difficult for me to read things on an angle, but uh, if I declare war against the Tulanid, uh, holy war even, then odds are the Abbasid are going to come in, and whilst all my troops are over here waging war for Alexandria, they're going to sneak around the back and ruin my day. So I'm trying, first of all, to just soften up the Abbasid a bit. Actually, are they the same religion? Yeah, they're both sunny. Ooh, but this area is part sunny, part miaphysite. Okay, that's interesting. I'll have to see what I can do with that, if anything. Um, 
but yeah, that's how that's, uh, that save is progressing, by using the religion mechanic and ensuring that my holy wars are won, I am able to inflict a considerable amount of harm on uh, the enemy that I'm fighting. Mending the Great Schism, of course, the big problem is going to be trying to get into Rome. Now, my hope, because uh, I don't think that I can, you can declare a holy war against, yeah, you can't declare a holy war against Catholic rulers because they're still technically Christian. Same way you can't also declare a holy war against uh, Miaphysites either because they're still a sect of Christianity. But hopefully they'll be wiped out as these conversions are getting very good. With my moral authority high, tr getting these conversions through is easy. I've also got my Ecclesiarch, which is my uh, equivalent of the court chaplain. He's uh, off converting the heathens as well. So he's. I've had I've had really good luck with my Ecclesiarchs. They have very good stats. In fact, most of my uh, court has. Now, uh, just take a quick look at my ruler. This is my second generation ruler for this game, and unfortunately, he's not having much luck with kids. Um, we has we have, however, had felt it necessary to bump off some of his uh, pretenders because there have been issues with that pair. I don't believe that. Yeah, there are a few claimants on the Byzantine Empire, but at the moment none of them are a particular threat. All of them have their own little titles, so they should be okay. I might want to consider promoting a few of these to kings, but we'll see where that goes. Um, I had a little bit of trouble when he took over with vassals not liking me. They're still not particularly fond of him, mainly because obviously, you know, so holding too many duchies, but, you know, uh, they can they can screw themselves with that as far as I'm concerned because my demence is at 8 out of 8 and I can take that minus 20 hit if it means a larger demence. Um, but aside from that, the raised levies are presenting quite a big problem as well because obviously fighting this many holy wars has required that levies be up almost constantly. Now, I'm getting some, I'm getting a very large retinue together now. So the retinues, um, with the smaller nations, I was pretty much able to conquer them using just the retinue. So I didn't have to raise levies and that wasn't a problem. But I've been involved in a very long, bloody, decades long war with the uh, Abbasid, Abbasid here. And that's uh, obviously required levies be raised for a very long time. And that has had the unfortunate impact of damaging relations with my vassals. Beyond that, though, relations are going okay. I've been using feasts, obviously, to help offset things. Um, I think I've still got... Have I actually gone over to Long Rain yet? Yes, I have. Uh, short Rain was a big pain in the neck. Unfortunately, I did have to make a concession and lower Crown Authority, because that faction... That faction always springs up on succession, it seems, because no one wants particularly high crown authority. Um, medium crown authority, though, is a very good idea as they cannot wage war within their realm. So you cannot, your realm can't weaken itself with internal conflicts. So try and keep medium if you can. But unfortunately, I was facing open rebellion with that, so uh, I had to give in. Now, um, we have one faction here, or oh, 2.4% strength of liege. Oh, so that's not an issue. And to be honest, given that all my vassals currently have a positive opinion of me, um, in some, oh, apart from this fellow here, what's his problem? Oh, he wants control of some of my territories. Well, sucks to be him. Apart from him, though, everyone's in pretty good spirits. And the court as well uh, likes me quite a bit. So all in all, I've been, do I've been doing quite well in this game. There was a bit of a wobble when I had to, when the succession passed over, but there always is with succession, that's why it's so dangerous. It's why you've got to keep an eye on your heir. Uh, this heir is my daughter, she's shaping up poorly. Um, di good diplomacy, it does not seem runs in this family. Pretty much every heir I have had has had terrible diplomacy scores. So I've been having to either pack them off into uh, bishoprics, one nice thing about controlling the Byzantine Empire is it's large enough you can actually just build a temple to pack off your uh, unwanted kids pretty much whenever you want. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, granting a bishopric or temple, you know, religious-based holding as it were, to a member of your dynasty disqualifies them from succession. So if you want to get someone out of the line of succession, say your firstborn son has crap stats, but your secondborn son has great stats, you can either kill your firstborn son, 
which is not a very smart move because if you fail you get the kinslayer trait and after that it's very difficult to recover relations with your family. But what you can do is if you appoint them a bishop or the head of a temple, any religious holding, it takes them out of the line of succession just as if they'd been killed. So your second son, who has good stats, would then take over. Of course, if you had a third, fourth or fifth born son, who is the one with all the good stats, then sometimes you're going to have to sharpen the knives and commit some infanticide. But uh, that's basically how you can use that to your advantage. And as I say, building new holdings is very difficult. It costs 700 gold, 800 gold. The price goes up as more holdings are constructed. But it can be very useful. Unfortunately, getting that sort of gold together isn't very easy. Normally, I prefer to play as um, subjugates. So I'll play as someone below a liege lord. Like one of my favourite playthroughs is actually... Does Poland exist here? Not quite. But uh, I play as a guy who ends up controlling uh, Lower Silesia here. And uh, he's under... Bosilav or Bosilau the Bold. That was quite a good playthrough. I very much enjoyed that one. Mainly because uh, I like the idea of usurping the kingdoms and things from within and actually seizing power that way rather than conquest. I find the political game a lot more entertaining and a lot more rewarding. If I'm not playing that, then I usually like to play one of the smaller powers. Um, so, for example, around here I'd probably play Brittany. And... I quite, I quite enjoy trying to build up something from nothing. It's why I also quite like the island playthrough, even though the main use of the island playthrough is for teaching people. It's quite fun to start off with, you know, just this small petty kingdom and then expand and take everything. I don't particularly like starting with everything, if you know what I mean. I prefer to earn that sort of power. But uh, nevertheless, that is my current state of progress on this Byzantine playthrough. I hope you've learned a little something about moral authority and why it's useful and why holy wars are good for more than just seizing land. Uh, a little bit about succession and the use of religious holdings and how you can use them to manipulate your line of succession. And also, obviously, the basics. The basics are still important, even in a game this large whether you're dealing with 56 vassals or 3 vassals, the basics are the same. Hold your feasts, keep them happy, spread some money around. When your ruler passes on through succession, you know, again, spread some money around, spread some honorary titles around, make concessions to factions, do what you need to do to keep the kingdom together, and you should be okay because you can typically claw back what you've lost quite easily. It's a lot easier to simply give it away without the war than it is to attempt to hold on to everything at once. So, I will see you next week, but for now, I'm Evis T, signing off.